Jefferson yes. Hawkins. Jefferson Hawkins, my comrade, <laughs> my <laughs> old Apollo fellow crew member from the 1970s, author of an electrifying read, a cliffhanger called Counterfeit Dreams, and the author of a blog, highly recommended. We'll do a screen scroll on this called Leaving Scientology. Brilliant mm -hmm. essays. Jefferson, you were pummeled and struck by David Miscavige more than yes. once. Yes. Please, please tell us what happened. Uh, I, I, I've told these stories many times, but uh, the first time that he ever um, physically attacked me was a complete surprise because at the end base, you never talk about this stuff. Uh, yeah. and, and nobody knows yeah. that uh, Miscavige is beating people unless they've actually been at the meetings. They don't know this and nobody tells them. Yeah. So I'm at this meeting and it, I had presented this uh, script for uh, an infomercial because that was one of the things I did was infomercial scripts. And um, I had presented this script, go to the thing and Miscavige is like, you see what he's written? You see what he's written? And he starts to read out parts of it very, you know, sarcastically. And then I tried to explain some of the rationale behind why it was structured the way it was, which was all based on marketing information. And I said, well, if I could just, you know, have a, say a few, and he said, see, see how he talks, see how he talks to me. And, and then that went, and then he's like, <clears throat> I don't want to hear anything from you except your crimes. That's all I want to hear from you is your crimes. And he's getting more and more and more worked up. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, I, at this point, I have no idea what to say to this person. And then he starts going, you see how he looks at me? You see how he looks at me? Which is so cornball. It's like, you know, it's like a middle school bully. You are looking at me wrong, you know? And, and, and of course, everybody around me is completely cowed. And this was all of the int executives, it's about 30 or 40 people. Wow. All of uh, uh, WDC, all of CMO International, all of Exec Stratus sitting there witnessing this. And they're all like, stop looking at him like this. Stop looking at him. And I'm like, like what? I, 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 you know, I'm just looking at it. Anyway, all of a sudden, he jumps up on the conference room table and launches himself at me, pins me up against one of the office divider things, and starts hitting me in the face. Wow. This is the and leader of the Church of Scientology. The leader Pope of, of the Scientology. Church. Punching yeah, you yeah. in the face. Punching me in the face, and then he takes me and he like throws me on the ground, and and as he throws me on the ground, my legs are are tangled up in his right, and he's standing over me and he 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 screams, "Let go of my legs!" But well, whatever, you know, yeah, like okay, you know, <laughs> and uh, and my shirt was half torn off of me, all the buttons were had popped out and, and I was just laying there with my face scratched up and he stormed out of the room and, yeah. and then the other executives around me are going like get up get up don't make him wrong wow in other words if I just continued to lay there that would be making him wrong mm. all right you don't yeah. you don't want to make him wrong you have to like stand up and mm. tuck your shirt in and you know make yourself presentable yeah. and so that was their concern at that moment. Not that I not that you had just been given been beaten and, and I was on the floor. No, it was like, well, get up, get up, because you don't want to make him wrong. Uh, one occasion, it was a marketing meeting, and um, I'm sitting in my cubby, and uh, all of a sudden. David jumps up onto the table and across the table uh, and at Jeff Hawkins, who was a, a marketing manager at the time, and knocked him over, grabbed him around the neck and was strangling him and pulling out his clothes. He had buttons popping 
off his shirt and um, change rolling. It was into my cubby, I mean, because it was right directly across from him. So it was just all happening right at my feet. In Leo 3, there was a beating every day. And if it wasn't him doing it, it was from him inciting others to do it to others. In front of other people. In front of other people. The next thing I knew, I'm being smacked in the face and knocked down on the ground in front of all these people. They seem to poke, you know, knocking me down on the ground. The scavenge was the one leading this whole physical violence kick, and it was him who was beating people up. It's been reported on the web that Lou, his assistant, would actually go round with, um, if a bloody nose occurred and the blood needed to dry up, she would actually go round with a disinfectant and first aid damage control to handle and put... That's, that happened to me. This was oh, tell, another to you, time. Tell us, oh, tell me. He, he came into, into the central marketing area and we were standing where he usually held court in the, in the central marketing area. And uh, for some reason, he gets uh, mad at me and he knocked me down on the floor, hit me and knocked me down on the floor. And then he gets up and he noticed that I had a cut on my face and that was bleeding. And he, he goes like this, Lou. And she goes in her purse, gets that little bottle of Mercurochrome and dabs it on my face. And it was like she knew exactly what to do. All he had to do was snap his fingers and say hello. And his first aid assistant is there to get, <coughs> to patch up someone he just caused to bleed. This is yeah, the leader yeah. of the church, David exactly. Miscavige. I exactly. wanted to tell you just one short 30 second story that, that aligns with yours. I was talking to um, a person who was in a tech and qual briefing by David Miscavige at the Sandcastle um, three, four years ago. And he's giving this high, high technical briefing to all of Tech and Qual. And as he says something, one of the people in the crowd gave a little whimper, not a giggle, but like, <laughs> it, it was just a nervous laugh. You know, some people have a nervous laughter. They're not meaning to laugh at you. They're, it just comes out. And David yeah. Miscavige went, who is that? And there was electrified silence in the room. And the guy, I think he was Swiss or some uh, outer org, whatever, some uh, Danish, Swedish, whatever from Europe, he raised his hand and said, it was me, sir. And he had this perpetual grin on his face, but this was a nervous smile. And David Miscavige took out a, a pebble or a rock you know, these demo kits have, you have a demonstration kit to uh, add mass when you're studying and it has pebbles and rocks. Anyway, he picked up a pebble and he hurled it across the room as a missile at this guy. It could have taken out his eye, it could have blinded him, but he hurled this rock or pebble in front of all of technical and all of qual the brazenness the brazenness and arrogance to do assault and battery where you hurl a missile across a room in front of 120 people shows how he does not think that the law of assault and battery applies to him because he knows nobody is going to press charges why does nobody press charges i know well, why but explain to the audience jeff <laughs> If you were to go to the police, that would be it for your Scientology career. You would be offloaded, declared suppressive, disconnected from your, your friends, your wife, your husband, your father, mother, children. You would be out.